Hi everybody, this is Gatsad for the Sad Truth. I was not planning on posting another clip today, having already done so earlier today. But as so often happens, I try to get out, but you keep sucking me back in. A uh, follower on my public Facebook page posted a, an article which uh, I looked at and read. And I thought, oh boy, I think I need to cover this right away on my channel. So this is an article titled Taking the P, P-E-E, -E, meaning urine, taking the P out of physics, how boys are getting a leg up by Anna Wilson, Kate Wilson, and David Lowe. It's in a uh, portal called uh, TES.com, which is a pedagogic educational portal that to the best of my ability, I looked at it. It certainly looks like a, quote, serious portal. It's not a satirical portal. It's not the onion. And so what they are basically arguing in this article is that one of the reasons, or maybe the reason that they've uncovered as to why uh, boys, men, perform better than women in physics is that the former P standing up and that this allows them to explore uh, projectile motion in a way that is simply unavailable to women. So let me just read for you the, uh, the relevant part. So here we go. Physics is heavily skewed towards boys because they have a unique advantage when it comes to understanding projectile motion. And argue Anna Wilson, Kate Wilson, and David Lowe, it's an area too heavily relied on in many curricula. Some of you will think we're daft. No. Some will wonder what kind of jobs we have if we have enough time on our hands to dream this kind of thing up. Some of you may even think we're having you on. Our intentions, however, are honorable. Playful urination practices, from seeing how high you can pee to games such as pee ball, where men compete using their urine to destroy a ball placed in a urinal, may give boys an advantage over girls when it comes to to physics. Let me scroll down. Challenging the gap, gender gap. This suggests that there is another reason for young women and girls' relative underperformance, and it must be one that specifically results in lower facility with projectile motion, because what, what these um, authors were arguing is that specifically on questions relating to projectile motion, this is where women perform poorly. And obviously... Of all possible explanations that might elucidate the mysteries of the sex difference, urine play is the one that is most parsimonious. Oh, Cam's razor, baby. All right, let's go on. The same sensitivity to environmental, sociocultural factors and embodied learning that points to ball sports as a contributing factor leads us to look for other aspects of common lived experience that might lead male students to have a better understanding and increased mastery of projectile motion compared to females. Like many parents of small and not so small boys, two of us, KW and DL, have observed the great delight young males take in urination, a process by which they produce and direct a visible projectile arc. The fact that boys and men play with their ability to projectile P is hardly contentious. Boys are trained to pee in toilet bowls with floating targets, a huge variety of which can be bought on Amazon. Amsterdam Airport Schiphol, Schiphol famously cleaned up its urinals by encouraging men to hit flies etched next to the drain and pee ball is now a worldwide phenomenon. Meanwhile, YouTube video videos explain how to write your name in the snow with your pee, and the post-match celebration peeing antics of sportsmen are widely reported in the media. Indeed, the very notion of a pissing contest, further, furthest, highest, most precisely aimed, is a deeply embedded part of some cultures. Alexander Pope includes a pissing contest in his narrative poem, the Dunciad. Our own children describe a stepped wall behind their primary school that's used by male pupils for competitive target practice. And a colleague who grew up in the Canadian Arctic, Arctic describes boys competing to see who could perfect the trajectory so that 
what ascended as liquid fell as crystal as ice crystals all this is experienced up to five times a day so by 14 <laughs> boys have had the opportunity to play with projectile motion around 10,000 times and 14 is when many children meet formalized physics in the form of projectile motion and Newton's equation of motion for the first time I'll, I'll stop here so guys like Newton Richard Feynman uh, Albert Einstein I mean they really mastered their peeing I mean those guys what differentiates those guys in the same way that it's peeing that differentiates men from women's abilities in physics within a sex say within men what differentiates some men as being really, really talented in physics while others are complete dunces is really a reflection of how well they engaged with their uh, peeing games. And so as far as we could tell at this point, Newton and uh, Feynman and Einstein were truly extraordinary pissers. Uh, here's an alternate theory. Evolutionary psychologists argue that men and women have evolved sex-specific abilities for sex-specific sex -specific, uh, pr problems that they might have faced in their evolutionary history. So on some dimensions, men and women are no different than one another. On other uh, tasks, men are better. And yet on other tasks, women are better. And if you wish to try to understand how those patterns of sex differences manifest themselves, then you have to ask yourself whether a particular uh, ability is in some way sex specific or not. And so one of the a very robust finding in the evolutionary psychology literature is the idea that men uh, perform uh, much better than women on spatial tasks, whereas women perform much better on memory location tasks. Uh, and this is a very, very robust finding. So here, for example, I've got a paper for, by Erwin Silverman, uh, Jean Choi, and Michael Peters, where they tested the hunter-gatherer theory of sex differences in spatial abilities. That's the title of the article. The hunter-gatherer theory basically says that given the unique uh, role specialization that men and women would have faced in their evolutionary history, they would have evolved specific cognitive abilities uh, such that men would, would perform better on certain spatial tasks and women would perform, perform better on uh, memory tasks, precisely in line with hunter or gatherer uh, or gathering uh, tasks in, in our evolutionary history. And so they did the study across 40 countries and seven ethnic groups. And in every single one, uh, men performed better than women on uh, spatial tasks, whereas uh, an object, uh, whereas women perform better than men uh, in all seven ethnic groups and in 35 out of the 40 countries. In other words, it's a very robust finding. And of course, there are very, very compelling, very sophisticated uh, evolutionary-based theories that try to explain why these phenomena manifest themselves in exactly this way. But these wonderful uh, luminary uh, authors have apparently shattered the evolutionary literature. It all boils down to Peeing. So if we could only get men to do what our radical feminists are telling us to do, which is to stop engaging in toxic masculinity, and instead of standing up while peeing, we should instead sit down, then we should hopefully see all of these patriarchal sexist sex differences when it comes to physics uh, completely wash away. No pun intended. So there you have it, folks. This is what happens when a profound... Uh, disregard for the truth, a profound disregard for uh, evidence-based thinking uh, infects our brains and we end up arguing that Einstein is Einstein because he really must have taken his peeing seriously. Have a good weekend, everybody. Ciao.